Well, welcome to Cord Art. Um, today, I want to try and make this beast or something very similar. I think we might go off this pattern slightly, but um, where do we start? I mean, we start with an idea first. The idea of making a dolphin. Um, now, I made this dolphin I uh, put it online and quite a few people liked it, so I thought I'd follow up with a tutorial. Now, what do you need to make it? Well, let's start off with the basics. We'll just run through what we've actually got here. We've got a former inside of polystyrene, and that's uh, worked out to be about nine inches long. It's about nine inches long, and it? The former it's a bit, looks like a, bit, a banana cut it out of a piece of polystyrene. Um, now I've been cutting up pieces of polystyrene and I'll come to that in a minute. But uh, what else have we got on this uh, dolphin? We've basically got um, the former covered in a bottle graft or um, a paracord bottle graft, which we'll be travelling through and looking at that. It's a two-tone graft which I was quite pleased about. Um, gives it an underbelly. It's got a dorsal. It's probably about the right size for this fish. But, well, it's not a fish, it's a mammal, isn't it? But um, I learned a lot actually doing this. And I learned that the proportions aren't quite as I wanted them. Um, I'd like the top of the body sort of thicker and the back of the body thinner and also shorter. So the next one I'm making with you is not nine inches long, but it's gonna be seven inches long. And rather than sort of, um, I think that's probably an inch and a quarter a, a diameter around here. Rather than that, it's gonna be about two and a half. Um, so we've got the bottle graft down the body um, and we've got uh, what have we got all of these things and we've traveled down through all of them they're all uh, angels wings but but prepared and fiddled about with in a different way so that they look slightly different um, a few bits and pieces I've made some eyes one of the comments online was why didn't you use Google Eyes? Well, I don't like using Google Eyes if, unless I really have to. Um, so I like drawing my eyes. Um, but saying that, that's what it is. And how are we going to try and achieve it? Oh, I made a little stand um, to go with it. Uh, all that is, you can see the piece of wire there that sticks into the base of the um, animal, like so, just to show it off. Um, we'll make the stand as well. It's just a piece of wire with a circle round, a uh, cobra at the bottom, and then we followed up the top by going through, um, is it DNA? I think it's a DNA. Um, so that was quite a nice little touch to finish it off with. So what have I done so far? Well, last year I was fortunate enough to buy these two horses. As I say, there were two horses. I've used quite a bit of one of them, this is polystyrene. It was only about 20 pence each. The craft shop was selling them off, and I thought, well, I'll have them for 40 pence, which is about 50 cents, I think, something like that. And as I say, um, I've taken a piece of this one to make my next former. As I said, I wanted it fatter and shorter. So what I've actually done is I've got a nice bend in this piece here. Now this bend I took from the underbelly of this horse. And then what I've done is just tapered it, tapered it down until I'm quite happy with the sizing. And as I say, this is the former. You would need to actually get hold of some polystyrene um, and just shape it into like a banana shape really. Um, I've come a bit more pointed on the tail end. I've got a bit of a longer snout on this one. Um, you can see there, longer snout. And it is quite a lot fatter. 
quite a lot bigger. But uh, so that's what we actually need. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch off because this is just an introduction to this um, uh, tutorial. I uh, just wanted to show you the basics. What we'll go on to next is the graft down the body and how we achieve that. So thanks for listening in on this part. I'll stop there, gather my thoughts, um, get a few dimensions on cord uh, and a bit of a start and I'll come back to you. Well, welcome back to uh, Cord Art and trying to have another look at this dolphin. As you can see, I've got a piece of cord wrapped around just where I think his nose will be. So we can actually build up on the face there. Yeah, we can build up on this face, but we do need to know how much cord we need to travel down the body. And the reason that I've got this pinned, I've got about five pins. I've started at the bottom. I'll just show you. Started at the bottom there, just, just twirled it round and then at the base just put a pin in to the two of them like so and that gives us the beginning of the graph that I want to try and achieve so we've got, then got to actually travel around with this piece of cord all the way to the bottom trying to find out how much cord we need well I've traveled down all the way down just wrapping it around stepping it down as we go like so and on this former I know that I need 15 feet of cord now that 15 feet of cord is going to be going through other cords which are going to go this way down the actual animal so it's going to be going under and over under and over but what we've got to actually do next is or determine what length of cord we are going to feed underneath this and bring it backwards on this former again it depends on your former really as i say the original was um, something like nine and a half inches long this is only seven and a half inches so i've actually cut a lot of lots of pieces of cord gutted they're gutted pieces of cord this is also is gutted the 15 feet that we're going to go round and round and round with is gutted this is gutted this is 20 inches long i've worked out off off um, line that if i actually go underneath this and back 10 inches is good so all of these pieces of cord that i've cut which are 20 inches long I've made it so that I can actually use a fid on each one. Um, it's only by doing this that you can find out how many pieces of cord you need to go around or along the former. How many pieces of cord fit in, I'll just show you. We're gonna be coming around about halfway with this blue. I've just I've decided to actually make this uh, animal out of blue and grey. So I've I've come round just to there, and that's ten inches on each part. Now, if I can just show you there, what I intend on doing is this is halfway down the animal, so I'm going to have the bottom one coming out straight and this one just beside it and to hold it into place I'm going to put a pin right the way through the, the, the holding cord and also through the two pieces of cord that come down here. Now I've worked out that I need all of these little bits, all, all of these little bits of cord um, I've worked out that there's about nine cords needed to travel around from this point to there. Yeah. They'll all, all be coming underneath. I'll just show you one more underneath. 
So I've worked out it's about nine pieces of blue cord. But I'll, I'll, I'll verify that as we go along. So that one's going to go underneath also. Double it up about the same length. What I should say about this project is not easy. A, and it takes quite a, quite a while. But if you can see that, hopefully you can see that. Um, the under one, this under one comes and goes along the top one of the previous cord. And then we come over, we go alongside it, stick a pin right the way through like so and we're going to travel around putting these cords underneath so that we have about um, just over half I would say covered in blue cords then the underneath and I'll show you one of those as because well, what I've prepared will be this silver grey again I've made most of them so that they will take a fid So we'll be going underneath like so, next to the blue one. The top, well, we'll, we'll even them out. So there's 10 inches on each part, but then we'll be traveling, I don't know if we can get that just right on the screen, hopefully. Just like so. I think that's um, showing okay. So we've got the top grey one coming next to the blue and then the bottom grey one just goes over that side slightly. We're keeping it in its place with a pin. Lots of pins involved in this. Fortunately with the former being polystyrene it's fine. But what I should say here is we're putting twos in so everything is so if I was just to put twos all the way round, it would be an even number. To make um, this wrap, we need an odd number of these. So one of the greys is going to be a single grey on its own. Well, welcome back again. Well, to recap, it looks a bit of a mess at the moment, this whole thing. Um, but what we actually did is I found out that uh, my former takes 15 feet of cord wrapped around it several to 20 times. So there's the 15 feet piece of cord. I just looped it round the nose, pinned it well, and doubled it back on itself. So I started here, came round, pinned it. Yeah, so I got that piece on its own. Then I cut um, lots of 20 inch pieces of cord so that I could actually loop them under this original cord, like so. And it's worked out on this former, and I must um, say that if you've got a thicker former, you're going to need more cords. A slimmer former, and you're going to need less cords. But the blues that I've put through, obviously they're doubled, so there's two to each pin, if you like. Um, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's 18 blue lines coming down this way. And if you look at it nose on, you can see that half of it is blue and half of it is gray. Now again, there's nine pins around this gray part here. But the very last one, which is this one, isn't a twin. All, all of these are twins, yeah? They just go over like, they go over the, like that, like so. The last one is a single one, because I did, as I did say, that you need an odd number of strands to go downwards. Now, with this 15 feet 
one. You've now got to go under, over, under, over forever more. And then just tightening up each one like so. To help us with that, we try and keep them all together with an elastic band. Not always successful, about halfway through the tightening process I found that I needed to take off the elastic band and go without it. Now I will be dipping in and out of this. You can see the idea. There's all the uh, cords coming down the, the former, down the body. This cord, I'm going to put it on, it's 15 feet and it takes quite some time to actually put it under, over, under, over, all the way around. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of it and then I'll come back to you. Um, one other thing that needs to be noted, although we've got even amounts of blues and greys, okay, we've got one less chord on the greys. When we get down to a certain sort of level, somewhere around this level, after going round and round and round, we're going to have to start diminishing chords because it goes, goes slender, doesn't it? So we're going to have to diminish chords. But for the moment, I'm going to pick up where I need to pick up just here, going under, over, under, over. Um, I'll get down about half an inch or so and hopefully you can then see what I'm trying to achieve. Well, welcome back again. Um, just wanted to show you how we're starting to look. Um, you can see that I've actually travelled down with the 15 foot piece down for about four rows. I mean I had a little bit of trouble um, if you remember, I said that you need an odd number of chords coming down from the front. It's where to put that one odd chord. And I put it between two, uh, a, a, a twin chord just here and let it down in the middle. That allowed me to carry on with the pattern of under, over, under, over. Now, that's four rows. Um, I'm going to get to about, I would say about eight rows, which is the thickest part of this uh, project. And then I'm going to start to diminish the grey ones because the blue ones will suffice all the way. So what you'll end up with is something like that, where the greys diminish. We just have to see how we get with that. But um, and I, I'm not quite sure of the rate of diminishing these greys. Um, but I think it will become obvious. It was obvious when I did the other one. Um, so I'm going to travel at least down to here before I come back to you. Um, per perhaps a little further. And then I'll have a better idea on how we're going to diminish the yellow, uh, sorry, yellow, the grey ones, so that we end up with a a nice underbelly rather than trying to put everything in together. Now this isn't an easy project as I said. Um, at the moment I'm holding this piece with um, a pin just in here um, just to hold the space and this is what I've found I've had to do. Put the pin in, rearrange all, all, all the way around after doing one full circle. Uh, or perhaps a circle and a half around and then pin it, put it all into um, into space, tugging on this one without the pin in. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow on down through there. Don't worry about the nose at the moment. We'll come back to the nose. But as you can see, it's starting to take shape. Well, hello there. Um, you can see that I've uh, come quite a way with this project now. Um, there's the extremity of the dolphin itself. But I've come across a bit of a problem and it's all to do with dimensions. Because I made it so thick and so short, that meant that I've got a lot of cord on a small object. So 
I was saying earlier on, I didn't know the rate that I would need to um, remove some of these uh, grey cords. Um, now it's become obvious to me, the fact that I've only got a, a small amount of body to fill in, say to there, that I've got to do something quite drastic. And the drastic bit is, is although we had um, double cords coming down, or looped over cords coming down, and we've actually spliced in between each cord. Now that we got this far, the only thing I can do to diminish these greys is to double them back up again. So underneath each one of these top ones, if I remove the pin, is its sister just below. Now what I intend on doing here is although I've manoeuvred them into pairs again, but uh, one on top of the other, is to use the top ones. The bottom ones I'm going to actually cut off just here. Touch of glue on there and pull that one down onto it. The, the next row that goes round, I've got it pinned at the moment, but the next row that goes round will only actually be tying down half of these greys. I've got a feeling that I'm going to have to do the same with not all the blues, but some of the blues to begin with, because I want to end up with just blues at the end, down here. Um, I don't mind if I have to extend it slightly past that point, which I, th I thought I'd have to do anyway. But overall, it's looking really quite good. I know there's a few pins pushed in here and there, but uh, I'm quite liking it. It's got the shape, it's got the bulk. But I'll push on with um, doing this section here, uh, see, what, see how it turns out, and I'll probably start doubling as many of these blues as I need to. I've worked out that if I doubled all the blues, then there wouldn't be enough. So I'm going to be doing some and some. That's my that's my plan anyway. So I'll switch off there. Well, here we are again. Um, I've just followed on and did what I wanted to do, and that was diminish all the greys. Um, and as I said before, I doubled up each grey, brought one over the top of the other, touched it with a mi minuscule amount of super glue so that this one stayed to the one underneath and then I've just followed on round with the next row and as you can see it doesn't look too bad at all it's still going checker shaped um, now I've diminished and that's diminished all the greys so we're getting down with the greys I'll probably have to diminish again um, now what I'm going to turn my eye to and it, as I say, this wasn't a, as big a problem on the original um, dolphin, but um, I like the problems because it, you have to find a way over them. Now, I know that there's probably too many blues there to carry on um, on that former. So I'm going to now look at uh, probably doubling a few of these up like so like we did on the greys, um, but seeing if I have to do all of them or some of them, all the time I'm actually going around with this 15 foot length of gutted cord. And as you can see, um, it's quite a good look. I'm quite pleased with it so far. It, this part's taken quite a bit of thinking about how and what rate of um, diminishing was needed. But I think we're getting there. Well, hi there. As you can see, I've actually finished this um, body, more or less. Travelled right the way down with this uh, covering wrap. It's not been easy. As you can probably see from the shirt changes that I've done up to this point, it's been over several days. And you think, well, what you've been hanging about at? But uh, it's not as easy as you might think. Uh, when you choose what sort of wrap you want to go around something you have to take in to consideration 
the sizes and dimensions, which I've touched on earlier. Um, if you're covering something fairly parallel, straight, something like this uh, Father Christmas I did some time ago, got a bottle underneath. You can lose the ends underneath and up un underneath other stuff. And it comes out really neat. Lovely wrap all the way around. No problem whatsoever. Um, again, with my one of my other projects, I did the snake's uh, fish scale wrap around his body there. That worked out really quite well. Again, because it was parallel. But um, when it comes to making something that diminishes it's really quite difficult we traveled down this bottom end and i said that i had actually doubled up on all the um, twins that were coming down here and i've got away with it really um, it's not perfect i've lost pattern here and there but overall looking at it, looking at it like that it doesn't look too bad at all now, once I'd done that, diminished all those here, I then did a couple of more wraps around with the 15 foot length. And I found that I had to diminish all the blues in the same way, doubling them up and carrying on round. And I've diminished them right to the end from 35 strands coming down the body down to 14. Now what we're gonna do is work out how to finish that off. Now, the body is good. I'm quite happy with that. I don't mind it being about another inch longer. So what I intend on doing now, so back to this uh, tail end, um, I think if I can get it in shot, you can see that I've actually cut all the ends off at varying different lengths to the to about an inch and a half I've left four out of the 14 now what I intend on doing is doing some whipping around here like so to about the tune of two inches so and the reason that I've cut these pieces at different lengths ie there's a gray there's a gray they're shorter and longer um, is so that it diminishes when I do the whipping down to a very small point. Now the idea of this is that we, looking back at the original, is that you can see that I've whipped around the base there, but we're going to have whipping further up. So the tail end is going to be fitted to the whipped piece. Now the way that I'm going to do the whipping is to, um, where are we? Get a small piece of gutted blue, loop it over and take it backwards like so. Just place it onto the tail. Then I'm going to get another longer piece of gutted, hold that end backwards to the tail, wrap it round like so then i'll come up through the loop and pull the loop through i'm i'm going to do that offline because it's going to take me a little bit of concentration and i don't want you hearing me swear if it goes wrong but um i'll have a go at it and i'll show you the result well welcome back as you can see i've done some whipping around the tail end there um I ended up with four blues coming out the end, um, cut them off, melted. Um, where I pulled the undercord through the whipping, these were the undercords. I'd actually, as I said, state, stated earlier on, I'd put a loop underneath and then the end went through there and I pulled it down to this position here, cut it off melted it, cut these two ends off like so, these two tail ends just here, melted it. And I've tried to maintain the shape going down like so. 
Now my plans are to actually put the tail on this section, round like, like so. And as I said, these are angel's wings and we'll be making some of those together. What I'm going to do next is, oh, you can see he's got a little bit, look very carefully, he's got a, a face on there. One of my sons decided to give it a couple of eyes and a nose. Well, we'll uh, disregard that. But as I said, I'm going to turn my attentions now to the front end. I'm going to wrap a piece of uh, masking tape around the uh, whole of the front end. Um, I'm going to use some sort of cobra like I've used on this one. That was a gutted piece of cord made into a cobra ring. And I'm going to play around with that now to see if Obviously this one's going to be quite larger, but I'm going to see how that looks. I'm going to do it in gutted um, blue again, uh, this dark blue, and see how that fits and work out what we're going to do with the nose. Um, with this one, I did a little bit of um, uh, playing around with it. I built the nose up, i.e. The, the tip of the nose with a bit of cord and then we, we, I wrapped I think it's three lengths so a dark grey and then two light greys on this one wrapped it round it and tucked them underneath the cobra so that's the idea that I'm looking at for the front end of this one as you can see they're quite different but uh, this was the effect that I was looking for I'm glad I stuck with it, although it's taken me quite some time to work out how to diminish all those cords with this type of um, wrap. Um, I think it's going to be worth it when we're finished. But I'll click off there, have a play around with the nose and keep you informed. So I've gathered a few thoughts on the nose. Um, I've measured around and it's four inches. So it's a four inch circumference. Um, sticking to the old faithful, I'm gonna do um, a cobra around here um, using about one foot um, to every inch. So I've got four inches. So I need 48 inch, uh, inches of cord. Well, I've cut the 48 inches of cord, gutted, and I've found myself a bit piece of a uh, spare um, inner, if you like, or the core. And I've just looped that over and then started to tie this cobra along it. Now, it doesn't need to be tight. It can be a loose tie. The idea is I'm gonna come down here to almost four inches, bring it back round, and then the last um, tie will be on this back end of the loop. And hopefully I'll end up with um, a circle effect like I did with this one. Um, so I'll switch off there, carry on with my Cobra, and then I'll show you when I've completed it. Well, welcome back again. I wanted to show how I'd actually gone about making the face of this uh, dolphin. And instead of building it, I thought we'd take it apart because... All of this section here is just built up with pins. Um, so if we take the first portion off, which is the Cobra. I mentioned earlier that we was gonna do a gutted Cobra ring. Now obviously this has gotta be tailored to what we're actually making. So what I've actually done is Cut it um, a four foot piece of um, cord, um, found a bit of waste, doubled it over and started tying cobra knots down at least, it's got to be at least eight inches because we've got, well, for the, this form it is. Um, then towards the end, I've pulled the, the core, which I've been traveling along traveling along there, I've pulled the core 
through the loop at the other end so that I can actually tighten it up around the face. Um, as I say, you have to add a, another stitch. It's like if I needed it bigger now, I'd just pull it out slightly like so and tie another cobra around this part here. Yeah, around this part here. Um, but that is sufficient for my former. And you might say, well, why have I pinned it all together? I wanted to see where I was with things before I started gluing things together. Um, you can see that there's quite a few pins knocking about on what I've done here. Now, like the other one, I wanted three strands going around the nose um, that made it look like a, a face. Yeah, So there's the cobra on the other one. A bit more slender than this one, but uh, same idea. Um, now, I wanted to cover all of the nose. And the way I've done that is a bit complicated, but I think it was all necessary. So I've cut these three pieces of cord, only pinned at the moment, not trimmed to the exact size, because I'm going to be putting this face back together again um, on my own. So I've pinned it all round just to get all the sizing. Yeah. Um, we'll move all the pins for the second. And remove these three bits of cord, if we can. And as I say, the idea is to cover and get the shape that we need for the face. Put that one over there. So I'll definitely use these pieces. So those were the three pieces that go around to form the face. Now, if you look what we've done here, I've called, I've actually tailored a piece of weave that goes around the nose from top to bottom. It's a zipper zenit, which is one of my favorite knots. It's just pinned in there. All I did was get a bit of gutted cord and just started making the zipper until it came to the right length from to go from the top of the snout round to the bottom of the snout. Yeah. Going back another stage, put that one there. I picked up a piece of gutted. Um, I wish I'd made it slightly longer because I've got to actually cover this small white piece here. But it's just pinned, so there's no problem. I can either replace it with another piece of um, cord, but I've got plans just to shift things around a little bit and I'll be able to use this piece. So, take these off. We can see, you can see that I, all I've done is actually wrap this just pin in there. Wrap this piece of uh, scrap um, cord, it's about, oh, I don't know, about a foot long. But it just started there. Pinned it in. I'll be gluing it in next. And that's the reason that I wanted to show you, um, sorry about going off centre all the time. I'm in a different position than the last spoke to you. Um, that's the reason I wanted to show you backwards because what I've actually done, I'll place that there because I want to use that. What I've actually done to the nose now is put masking tape all the way around it a couple of times. And you might think, well, why do you need to do that? Well, as I've mentioned in the other projects, that you might have seen that super glue doesn't like polystyrene whatsoever but 
if you cover the polystyrene with masking tape, you can quite confidently start sticking bits and pieces around. As you can see, that's the effect that I'm trying to get. So now I'm going to go in reverse of what I've just showed you. So going forward, if you like, because we were in reverse um, and build this face up. The telling part of this project will be the eyes and the shape of the flippers. And that's what we're going to do next. Well, we're not going to do the eyes next. We'll do the eyes last. But uh, we're going to go on to the um, angel's wings. Um, for this project okay so I'll leave you there and build this face up the way I wanted it thanks so here we are um, as you can see I've uh, completed the face apart from the eyes if you look at the other one the eyes actually travel over the this band just here so we'll be putting some eyes on there but I think the uh, face has come out quite well I um, don't think I've got any white showing which was the intention and he's starting to look a little bit like a dolphin the well, next stage we're going to go on to is making some flippers for it and a tail and a dorsal join me for that well, welcome back. Um, we're going to push on quite a bit with this uh, project. It seems to be going on forever. So let me tell you firstly what I've been up to. I've been making um, angel's wings. As you can see, there's two there of the same size. In fact, there's a third one there. It just so happens that the tail flippers are going to be the same size as the side flippers. So we're going to make one of these together today um, and I'll go into the ins and outs of that shortly. Um, this is for the dorsal fin, uh, like so. I always find that it's a bit too floppy with just one. So we're, I've made two, which I'm going to stick together, shape around a little bit and then that's going to go on the top, like so. Right, so let's set our attentions to making um, a gutted um, angel's wing. Now I've done um, a tutorial online for doing angel's wings. It wasn't particularly good. I went wrong a couple of times and it was early days. So I've learnt a few things and plus doing a gutted um, angel's wings is more difficult than just normal cord. So what we need first is a piece of wire five inches long just with with one end doubled over. Yeah, it can be a flexible piece of wire. It's just to hold its place. That's the piece of wire in this one. It travels from here down to there. It just gives me something to work onto. Um, I found that using this piece of wire um, rigid increases the rigidity of things yeah so I've got a nine foot piece of cord here and we're going to feed that five inches of cord into it if I haven't melted it over I have let's check the other end and that's melted over as well so let's just uh, release one of those ends So we're going to put the bent end of the of the wire, like so, into the cord. All of it, so it's all in there, five inches, and just passed. And then we'll heat the end up. Just press over. Now, what I do need is a pin also on that very end where we've just melted over. Now that's to stop stitches from slipping off, okay? Because all we're gonna do with this 
Just hold it like so. I'm going to try and make sure that everything's seen online. Um, now, there's a left-handed angel's wing and there's a right-handed angel's wing. And you think, well, what's the difference? Well, it's not so important on this project, but on some projects you need to have the part where you cut off on the top opposite on the other one so that they're sided if you like and the way that we actually change a left-handed to a right-handed is we start either in front of the we've pulled it over to a, a big u-shape back down to the um, piece of wire we either start at the front or the back we're going to start at the front today and there's a few basic things that need to be known as we go along. Now, this has got nine bytes on it. I've decided that my flippers and tail parts are gonna have nine bytes along the base. So we're gonna have nine bytes along this base here. When I did the dorsals at the top, there was only six bytes. So that's why they're much smaller, yeah? Right, so we've come on top of this. We're now going to go underneath and, up, and double it up through, like so. But this is the crucial part. You must make sure that when you place these in, they're not twisted. Yeah? I, as we go on a bit further, you'll see what I mean. So that's one bite there. To get a second bite, we come round the bar, or round the wire, back up through, and weave it underneath the second one and over top of the third. Now you think, oops, better not let that one go. You think, yeah, he's done that, that's fine. He's made that second bite. But what you've got to concentrate on here is it comes up round there, and it is actually twisting. It needs to be untwisted. It's got to be straight. The reason I say this is because when we come up, come to the tightening up uh, part of it, trying to get the twist out of an already made angel's wing is difficult. So it's worthwhile spending a bit of time. So we've come back down here. We're going to repeat what we did on this one over the wire underneath. over that one, under the following one, and over the top one. Now just again, it looks good, but it's not. This one has twisted. We need to untwist that one fully, like so. Now we have Three bytes, one, two, three. Yeah. We want to carry on until we've got nine. So back up and over the the wired par portion. Under the next one. Over the next. Under. Then the top one we go over, and we check to see if there's a twist, and there is we need to untwist that one the opposite way so it stays flat. It is crucial, it really is. So now we have uh, four bytes. Going into the fifth, go under this time, over, under, over, under and over the top one. Just check that again. We just need to make sure that that is flat. When we've gutted cord, it does tend to look good, but it's not always the case. So now we have five. They soon mound up. Not quite happy with that one, the way that it's uh, lying, but we'll give it a chance. So, over, under, over, 
over, under, over, and under, and over. Pull that up through. Right. We'll make sure that that is square. Okay, we can spread these out a little bit now. This is for stopping any of these coming off. So we're up to six now, three more to go. see that this one is definitely got a twist in it so we're going to take that twist out by just maneuvering that around like so happy with that one come to the tightening it's usually that we have to follow the sequence twice through um, but if you're trying to pair something up with something else then have that other other one ready and you can actually check on the tightness against this one right we'll just pull that one up through right from that point on we make sure that we've still got our end over here, which is that turned over piece of wire. We can actually stick another pin in there if we, if we want, to stop the stitches from falling off. Just put a pin in there. Now I'm going to take all of those over. You can see the pin is stopping them from falling over. I'm gonna bend that down. It's not as it's not as tight as I want it to be yet. When we just look at that, and it doesn't look anything like this at the moment, does it? But when we've tightened it up, it will do. We can take that pin out of there now that we've bent that round. These stitches aren't going to go that way. Now we have to start somewhere in tightening these up. And this one, which has got the wire in it, goes along the bottom here, goes through a right angle, well, through a U-bend, and back here. So this is the point that we want to start tightening. Like so, yeah? It's then going to come up to this one. Like so. And we're going to tighten down fairly tight. And this is the point of having that um, wire in there. We can actually pull hard on the wire. If it was just a single piece of gutted cord, it would be all over the place. So we pulled that one up nice and tight, holding the wire. And then we're going to work this one back over this side. Now, inevitably, there's going to be a twist in here somewhere. Sometimes you can get away with the twist. You don't have to take it out. But on other occasions, it's uh, advisable to get rid of it. Right, so we can get rid of that pin now. Because we're just going to tighten up this end one. Bring that down through, making sure we know where the piece of wire is, which is just there. We're going to then, that's come through there, yeah this is the one. So easy to go wrong, as you'll see on my, if you can bear to watch me on uh, another video, on uh, Cold Art, 
I do get there, but I do make a few mistakes. So we tighten that one really nice and tight so that we know that that um, wire is there and there. So we've come up to here now. We're now going to come back this way. Yeah. We've done the first one. We're going to concentrate on the second one in now. We're forever going inwards, inwards and upwards. Yeah. So this one should come down here, like so. Give that a little bit of a tug backwards, not too much. We are just figure it. We're still on the second one, but we're going, that's this one here. We're now going to be going up this line. So we pull that one up there. Give it a nice bit of a tighten on the wire while we can. Up through here. And then across. Over here. The art of these really is neatness and tension. Um, I can... I tend to get them how I want them because I've made so many. So it is a bit of practice as well, you know. Saying that, I'm likely to go wrong any second. So with the second one in on this side now. So that's the one we've just pulled down. Yeah. Now we're going to go up further through this one. And I'm having an easy time of it because I made sure that all of those cords didn't have any twist in them, or as much as I could. I think I might have got away with it. Not quite sure yet. Bring that down a bit. Pull that into shape. Coming into the third one along now. I want it tight but not over tight. Going one more that way. And up we go again. I know it's, th it's this one, so I can pull through two stitches. Um, is there a twist in that? No, it's just the way it's lying. So grab hold of the wire again, give it a nice little tug, and then we're going over sideways again. As I say, we're going to have to go through this sequence twice, at least twice, to get it down to the tension that we need and the size that we need. Now there is a twist there. I'll twist it back out. Um, I think that's going to follow us now, that twist. Now we're okay. Now we're on the third one in from this side. Coming one more. And I believe it's that one. Skip a couple of stitches because I know it's that one. Bring the cord over. Give it a little tug down. Little tug down. Trying to keep it square, yeah? In shape. Now I'm pretty sure it's that one right down the bottom here. So if I follow through with that one, we should be okay. A little bit of twist in it. Let's see. Yeah, there is a twist there. Now, if you have a twist, you have to work it through the knot. But if you actually bring it back with sufficient distance, i.e. that distance to go through that knot, you can twist it here, hold tight on it and pull it through, and it'll take the twist through. As I said, there's usually some sort of twist in this knot. Once you've gone through the once and got rid of all the twists, if there is any, it's, strain, it's plain sailing. See, I seem to have lost that twist now on the bottom. Sometimes you manage to take the slack up, but you have to be on the lookout for a twist all the time. Let's give that a bit of a pull. All right, we're getting up towards the top now. Bring that one through. And then we're going to go down here. sure that that twist that I've just seen follows through on the knot. So I've got the twist there, hold down tight, let it slip through and, and the twist is now in this part. Um, right, so we now want to come down to that one. Let's just check for twist.
just a worker. the second to last one now I like to get hold of that and bring it down so I don't lose it so that's going to go up through there like so then going to come back down here like so then pull that one up now I know it's the last one so if I hold tight on that wire I should be able to pull that one straight through. So that's one tightening. As you can see one more tightening should bring it nice and small. I'm going to do the next tightening offline um, and then I'm going to come back to you and talk to you about how we're going to shape these to go on the animal. I know I'm going to do these and I know I'm going to do the tail as well. Not so sure about the dorsal fin but we'll sort something out with that. And then what have we got left after that? We've got his eyes to do, give it a mouth and a blowhole, and make one of these stands. Yeah. So I'll come back to you. Just to finish that one, um, we just snip off the end, a little bit proud. Melt that one over. And we've still got the wire in this one. We want to make sure that it's the same shape and size. There's not a lot we can do about it now, but um, it still sort of moves backwards and forwards a little bit. So just size that one up to there. And then what we do, got that wire through there, so we're not gonna cut that with our scissors. We'll cut that one off a little bit proud, like so. Bear down and get a bit more of the wire while not cutting the end of the cord. So we just got a bit of cord there then. Give her a good old heating up. Make sure that it doesn't all spring out on this. Now, we can shape these to the shape that we want. Um, having in mind um, the tail, which these two pieces will be, it doesn't actually look like that. It looks more like that. And having in mind we've got the wire in there, we can even make the bend a bit, a little bit more so, so that the tail looks like so. But then, of course, these aren't straight, so they, what I'm thinking about doing is just bending a little bit, like so. Sticking a bit of glue underneath that side. Yeah. You have to make sure you've got it exactly right. And if we've got two of those, something like that. We start about there, gluing that onto there. When they come together down here, or does it look okay? We're just one like so. That's a bit big for that. So what I'm trying to say is a bit of shaping to be done there, something like so. But uh, you can see that bit there. It's just a matter of playing around with them. Again, with the, um, well, let's go to the dorsal. Again, I've got the wire in there so I can bend it slightly. If you look at it like so, it looks like a dorsal. If I can get it to stick down like so, that will look fairly good, I think. And that's the two stuck together, yeah? With the flippers, Again, um, I'd like to have them with the wire at the back. Not sure if I will do at the moment. Um, it might be that they come off like that, which 
What I've done with the other one is I folded them in half. Like so. Um, glued them. And then they go on, on the sides like that. That's not too bad. So it's a matter of playing around with these. Because they're gutted, you can play around with them. Um, the wire helps you achieve the shape. So I think on the next, when I come back to you shortly, these will be two parts of the tail. These will be two parts to the flipper. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to fold them yet. And this will be attached, not that way, like so to there. And we'll see what that looks like. Thanks. Well, as you can see, I've um, managed to shape these up quite well. Now, how have I managed that? I mean, that looks just exactly the shape that you want a tail coming round like so. Um, all I've done with these is I've left the wire end towards the rear and then just folded, folded that over there like so, glued it down and we've ended up with a tail shape. Again, with the fins, rather than, um, I've decided to leave the wire end on the inside of the body on this one, but rather than fold the whole thing over in half, like uh, so, I've decided to have it that shape. I think it looks a bit more like a flipper. So that's good. The dorsal has come out quite well. I've left the wire towards the back end for the new one. Now where we place that, we have to be a bit careful how we place that because you've got to have the blowhole just here, his eyes just there, and then just a piece of black cord dividing the lips up so that we have a mouth like so. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and pin these first into position to make sure I've got everywhere everything where I want it. Um, then go ahead and glue those five pieces into place um, once I'm really happy where they should be because there's been quite a lot of work gone into the whole thing so far. Then I'm going to make some eyes, put that bit of black around there. The blowhole is just a piece of 1.8 black cord twisted round into a circle like so, just stuck on in the right place obviously between the eyes and between the dorsal and the head. Um, and we'll see how it comes out. And I'll come back to you and we'll make this together. Okay, thank you. Hi, so to make the um, stand, we need 18 inch piece of wire. It's still quite flexible. It doesn't have to be really rigid. We find something with about a two and a half inch diameter. This is a little plastic, well, I think it was yogurt at one point. Find the center of the wire, just bend it round the wire, and then we just wind the wire up like so. Now we don't want to go right to the very end, because I want to end up with one piece that, that I can actually stick into our project. So I'd probably, a little bit more, I'll leave about, there's about an inch there, a bit too much really. Let's take it down to about three quarters of an inch. Um, we'll cut off the larger piece, like so. Right, then we'll remove it if we can on the yogurt pot, move them out of the way, then we're going to bend it up like so, yeah, that's good. So now what we're going to do is 
we need a 10 foot piece of cord. Now this isn't gutted cord, this was made out of um, proper 550. Um, so we get the 10 feet of cord, which I've cut already. And I found the center. And then what we're gonna do is start here and do a cobra around the circle until we get here. I wanna go ahead and, and do that now. Um, do the cobra and I'll come back to you when I've come back round there. Just wanted to dip in here, um, show you how we're um, doing the cobra around the circle. So we started there. We're just following along now. So we're using the wire as the core. The outside one goes over the top, underneath. And needs to be pulled very tight. And it will take the shape of the circle. One more. So you have to maneuver around this wire to actually get the tie tied around the wire. But it's doable, it's not particularly difficult. And you'll end up with, we can see it on here, here. Um, and that's coming along quite nicely. So I'll come back to you when we get round to this, this side and we go on to our DNA going up the wire. So there we are, we've carried on all the way around doing the Cobra around that ring of one and a half inch diameter piece of wire. I've done the first one of the DNA going up the wire. Of course the uh, DNA is just keeping one sided Cobra going all the way up. So I'm gonna travel up this Cobra, up this wire rather, so just about there where the wires set um, a double so that we've got a nice little spike on top for our creature. And I'll come back to you. So just to finish that off, um, we've traveled up there with our DNA stitch, left myself about half an inch of a spike. Uh, trim these and melt. just similar to the other one. So I'm I'm quite happy with those. I think that's a bit more central to the screen. Um, so I'm going to push on now. What have I got to do? I've got um, the eyes to sort out for the uh, dolphin. I have actually stuck on its fins and flippers and what have you. And its face, uh, blowhole, it's got a blowhole. Uh, so I'm going to muck around with some eyes. I can't work out if I'm going to have similar eyes to this one. I do like those eyes. So I might make a, a set of those eyes as well as something else and try one or the other. But I'll come back to you and the project will almost be done then. Well, I'll come back to the very last part of this um, tutorial. As you can see... Our beast is made and they're swimming together through the ocean. Now uh, the effect I've got here is what I was looking for. I would change things as usual if I could go back. I'd probably have the tail rather than nine bites, probably down to seven each side so the tail was slightly smaller but the effect is uh, quite good. Again with the dorsal, I've got um, six bites along here. I would probably take that down just one bite to five bites. But his eyes are okay. His face looks good. 
The dorsal fins there, sorry, the flippers there look really quite smart. I'm quite pleased with that. Look at him from the rear. You can see his blowhole there and his eyes. Tail, well, my wife reckons it looks more like a whale. That's why I was saying decrease these slightly, probably down to seven each side. But uh, all in all, I'm really pleased with it. Um, I can now go on to something different. But please subscribe if you uh, think that you've learnt anything from this or it's given you a few ideas. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye.